Okay, and we are live. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Discrete Random Variables and Binomial Distribution. We have Jamie and Renee with you in the house this afternoon. And now we are at question nine. Okay, let's break down this question first, okay? Okay, it looks very complicated, huh? Okay, but this is the kind of questions that you should be expecting. Okay, in a game, two red balls and eight blue balls are placed in the bottle. The bottle is shaken, so like, what this is trying to tell you here is that the selection is going to be completely random because it is shaken. And Mary draws three balls at random without replacement. So re without replacement means that the, prob the probability of uh, each chosen ball uh, subsequently will be affected. Okay. The okay eh, same thing. Uh, same thing applies. If you understand, give me a take on the on the side to acknowledge that you understand. If you don't understand, yes. Okay. The number yeah. of red balls, the number of red balls that she draws is denoted by R. So they defined for you already. They define the number of red balls for you. Find the probability distribution of R and show that P R greater or equals to one is eight over fifteen. Okay. Do we need to draw a table? Um, usually when they say probability distribution of R, right? Over here. Probability distribution can only happen in two forms. It's either it is an equation or it is a table. But what markers are looking out for is always... Is always what? Table. Table. You know it lah. You know it. So do you have to draw the table? Yeah. Yeah. You have to. Okay. So she's going to draw three balls. Okay. She's going to draw three balls. And now she, she, she tells you that R, she already defined R is the number of red balls drawn. Okay. Since she's going to draw three balls, okay, what are the different values of uh what are the different values that R can take? Okay, what are the different values that R can take? One and two. One and two. You sure? Is that all? Zero. Yes, zero, one, and two. Okay. So over here, we are going to draw a probability distribution table. Then what's this table? Uh, the Which table? Uh, oh, this type. Times table. Periodic table. Which, which table? Wait, 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 hold up. The PDF? Yes, it's called the PDF. Very good. This is called the P probability. Distribution table. Yeah, this eh? Oh my gosh. This one. So you know. Then X one, X two, then. Oh, that one. That 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 one is not really uh that, that one is not probability distribution table. That one is basically uh. It's something like a tree diagram, just that it is put into a table. You know, a probability tree diagram. What's that table called? And when do we draw that? Mm, I, that one is just called a probability table. It's not really a probability distribution table. Okay. Yeah. When do you draw that? Uh? Mm, usually when you have two variables, like you have two dice. Or like you have a die and a coin, then they tell you that okay, if it's heads, then you get one, then you get some then you get something you have to find the probability. That is when you need like two columns, alright. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, coming back to this chop chop. Huh? So we have R here, we have probability of R, big R equals to small r. Okay. So now for R values, we have 0, 1, and 2. What's the probability of getting 0 red balls? Okay, the probability of getting 0 red balls means you are getting 3 blue balls, right? You're getting 3 blue balls, am I right? Hello? Yeah. yeah. So how to get three blue balls? It will be eight over 
10, correct, times 7 over 9 times 6 over 8. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, how do we get one red ball? If on one red, which means we have two blues, correct? But the thing is, we do not know whether is it the one red first or two blue first. Two times that times factorial or something. So, well, hold on. Uh, so, probably distribution of R. Because now it's without replacement. So this will start to get a bit cranky. So, which means we have to do by cases already. Which, which means, because by right, uh, we can do the factorial method. But now we cannot do the factorial. Okay, let's say if they, they were to mention that. Okay, what, what Rene is saying here. What Rene is saying here. Is that. It's only for the case of with replacement. But over here, it was without replacement. So if it's, let's say we talk about the case of with replacement, uh, means that the probability of choosing a red and a blue uh, will always be the same, am I right? Okay, so the, the, the probability of choosing a red and a blue will always be the same. Uh. In this case, we have R, B, B, red, blue, blue. We, it can be B, R, B, 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 R, we don't know. So in this case, the probability of choosing a red will be say, uh, 2 over 10, right? Probability of choosing a blue is 8 over 10, and probability of choosing a blue is 8 over 10 again. Okay. So over here, if we want to find, if you want to find the probability of choosing just one red ball, it will be 2 over 10 times 8 over 10 times 8 over 10 times 3, factorial over 2 factorial. Why? Because this is the uh, number of ways to arrange 3 letters with 2 repetitions in it. It's the number of ways to arrange 3 letters with 2 repeated letters. Okay, if no objections, I'm going to move on. Okay, but right now we cannot do by this way. I have to delete it because we are doing by without replacement right over here. Okay, so without replacement, we cannot do that. So over here, we got to do by cases already. So for one, for one red and two blue, because we don't know whether we get the red first or we get the blue first. Then the second ball, we also don't know is it red or blue. We will know, right? So it can be red. We have to list all possible cases. Red, blue, blue. Or blue, red, blue. Or blue, blue, red. Okay. So in this case, we will have to find out every single probability. This will be uh, 2 over 10 times... Um, let me use... This will be 2 over 10 multiplied by um, 8 over 9 times 7 over 8. This will be 8 over 10 times 2 over 9 times um, 7 over 8. This will be uh, same thing, 8 over 10 times uh, 7 over 9 times 2 over 8. So we have to add all of this up. Can someone calculate for me?
Seven out of forty-five. Oh, which one? First. Let me just add up all together. Later. Yeah. Uh, seven over forty-five. It's also seven over forty-five. Yeah. Oh, so strong. Seven over forty-five. Oh, what? Okay. Maybe they do that because they know people get it wrong, don't they? Okay. So, what what about the first one? Seven uh, over fifteen. Where, where I equals zero. Seven over fifteen. Seven over fifteen. Oh shit. Seven over fifteen. So if since this is seven over fifteen and this is twenty one over forty five, so we, we 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 don't have to calculate for the last one, right? Because the last one is what two red and one blue. It will be super tedious to go through these steps again. So instead of doing that, remember what we should do, Jamie. Mm -hmm. How should we find the probability for r equals two? Um. There's a shortcut. One. Can't remember. Renee. One minus the rest. Sorry? One minus the rest. Correct. One minus the rest. Isn't that what I just said though? You said one minus but you didn't complete. Then after you said you don't know. Oh, okay. I, yeah. Like if I were to ask you what is your name? You won't tell me J I don't know. You will tell me my name is Jamie, alright? Because you know. Yeah. So you got to be that confident. Okay, so always remember to find the last probability in the table, don't be dumb. Just use one minus every single probability that you have found before. Okay, so over here, this should be uh, 21, 21. So this will be 4 over 20, 25. 4 over 45. Okay, so that will give you the marks for the first for the first part here, probability of distribution of R. And show that the probability of R greater or equals to 1 is 8 over 15. So over here is very clear, you can just use this plus this. 1 over 15. Eh? 1 over 15. Sorry, hold on. 7, what time? 3, 21 plus 21 is what? 40. Oh yeah, sorry, 3. Three. Yeah, so from here you should be able to add up the probability attached to r equals 1 and 2 to give you this Okay Okay, uh. so show that the expectation of r is this. Well, this one is not difficult, uh, right? Okay, find the variance. How to find variance? What's the formula? Let's in, out. in out. In out. Expectation of x squared in minus out Solid. Solid. Okay. Next up. Okay. Let me clear this thing first. Okay, Mary scores four points for each red ball that she draws. Okay. Now they add a new variable inside her. Huh? Now we talk about the points for drawing a particular ball, okay? The balls are now replaced in the bottle, okay? And the bottle is shaken again. Okay, so uh, the balls are now replaced in the bottle and, okay, what this is trying to say is that they put back all the balls that she draw, they put back all the balls that she draw here, okay? Because in the next time, say John draws three balls at random without replacement. Now it's still without replacement, okay? 
Wait, how to show this in? This plus this. Probability of R. Okay. Good that you stop me. Uh. Please always stop me when you don't know. Probability of R greater or equals to 1 is equals to probability of R equals to 1 plus probability of R equals to 2. Make sense? Because those mm. are all the values. For, for values of R, we only have 0, 1, and 2. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you show it. Expectation and variance don't need to go through, ah. Uh. No. Yeah. Okay. The PDF is just a table, right? PDF is the table. Okay. Okay. John draws three balls at random. And without replacement, he scores one point. Okay, one point for each blue ball drawn. And Mary's score is denoted by M and John's score denoted by J. Find the expectation and variance of M minus J. Okay, so looking at this thing, right? Understand the setter's intention here. Okay. Wait, is this, is this like the, the expectation and the gain thing? Or is it not? Um, no. No. It's not. It's not. Uh, the, mm. You're talking about the fair game. No. Oh. Okay. The fair game comes with a cost. Okay. For a game, for it to be a game, it comes with a cost. I think the next uh, one or two questions will be talking on fair game. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for this question, there's no cost involved. So it will not be a game. For it to be a game, you need to you need to pay to play. And this is like a free game. Like what you always search in your app store. Okay. So right now over here, what's the intention of the setter? They want to find the expectant, uh, expectation and variance of M minus J. So basically, what the setter wants is to test you on the properties of expectation and variance, of course, right? So the expectation of M minus J will be equals to? E M minus E J. Correct. What about variance of M minus J? Variance M plus variance J. Plus, very good. Jimmy, why is it plus? Because the square. Solid. Very good. Okay, so for this question, um, the confusing or the, the okay, we already we already identified the setter's intention already. What we really need to do is just to find expectation of M, expectation of J, variance of M, variance of J. The job is done. You will secure the whole question. I think this question is probably worth like seven, eight marks. Yeah. So, but, but the thing is, how do we find expectation of M and J? Of course, we will need the PDF for M and J. Okay, once we can get, get the PDF of M and J, we will be able to get that at both expectation and variance. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so over here, Mary scores four points for each red ball she draws. The balls are now replaced in the bottle. I think it is still, for Mary, it's still without replacement. Okay, for Mary, it's still without replacement. Is it she just continue from... Yeah, basically, I think what happened is the transition here, right? Why they mentioned this, right? Is to tell you that they reset the game. Now Mary is going to draw three balls because it's in relation to this question. Bottle is shaken, Mary draws three balls.
But what did they say now replace? For John what to do. Yeah, possible. Well, wow, then this is like, it's super redundant. Okay lah, but I mean, it. there's a link to it so that we know that John draws right from the very beginning again. So so for this whole distribution, right, for, for this whole question, right, it should respect this PDF. The probability of drawing zero balls, one red ball, and two red balls, it should always respect this um this probability distribution that we found in the in the first part. Okay, the only difference now is the number of points. Is the number of points. So now m is the, so now m is the number amount of the is the score right? It's the score. So now we have to define a new uh, variable again. So m will be equals to the equals to Mary's score, right? So since M is Mary's score, we need to find the PDF of Mary's score. Okay, so what are some possibilities of Mary's score? If Mary draws zero red ball, it will be zero points, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then if Mary draws three two red one red ball, it will be four points. Mary draw um two red balls, it will be eight points. So right now we're gonna have M probability of capital M equals to small m. Okay, so we have zero points, four points, and eight points. So for Mary to get zero points, it would be? Seven over 15. Seven over 15, basically you just copy and paste. Then this is uh, divided by three is seven, uh, three, also seven over 15. Then this how is, is uh, how come is how come it's not 21 over 45? It's so 21 over 45 is 7 over 15, right? Is it? Oh. Yo. Yo. Yo, are you okay? 21 over 45 is 7 over 15, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then now we have to draw another table for. John's balls. Eh, no, 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 not, 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 not John's balls. John's score. J equals to John's Okay, so John's score, it can be zero blue ball, one blue ball, and two blue balls again, right? Wow, that is messed up. Uh, means we have to recalculate again. Why? This is J. So it's probability of capital J equals to small j. So it's equals to zero points, one point, and two point. Probability of getting zero. Um probability of getting zero blue ball means you get three red ball. Right? Eh, cannot be, cannot be, cannot be. We cannot have three red ball because we only got two blue ball. And we only got two red ball. Which means John's score, right? Minimally, right? He will definitely be getting one blue, minimally. There will not be, he will not be drawing zero blue ball. You know why? Because there's only two red balls. Yeah, no, they only two red ball, and he has to draw three. Right? 
Right? So minimally, he'll be drawing one. So it's one, two, and three. Okay, so probability of drawing one blue uh, is already calculated, right? Because over here, which is one over 15. Probability of drawing two blue is also calculated. Is twenty is seven over fifteen. So probability of drawing three blue is also calculated. Is seven over fifteen. So from here, right, I don't think we need to do any further workings. Really, this one I will just leave it to your you guys to evaluate it. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah. So is this question a difficult question? No, it's not difficult. It's just complicated. That's the difference. Difficult means like like it's very it's very very con concept intensive. It's like you when you look at it, you don't know what to do. But a complicated question is that you know what to do. It's just that it takes a bit long. It takes a lot of steps to do it. Okay. Next up. Okay. Th these are the really the kinds of question that you need to look out for. Because the earlier questions that we did uh, last week was like um, the more fundamental kind of questions. Um, maybe I should crop this. Okay. I think I will just do question 10 then I will move on to binomial reading. Okay, mm. Yeah, question 11 you can try. If you don't know, then you can ask me again. That's my pen. Huh? The heck? Shit. Okay, um, let's go. After this question, we'll take a short break. Okay, Alfred and Bertie. These two fella, okay. They started with cash amounting to hundred dollar each of them, uh, each of them. Okay, they got hundred bucks each. Two dice are thrown. Okay, if the total two dice, two dice. If the total score is five or more, Alfred pays X dollar, where X is between zero to eight dollar. Okay, uh, eight inclusive to Bertie. If the total score is four or less, Bertie plays this amount, okay, where X is still between zero and eight, eight inclusive. Okay, show that the expectation of Alfred's cash after the first game only, means after they roll it the first time, okay, is this. Okay. Let's try to understand this question. Two dice are thrown if the total score is five or more. Okay, so basically it's not that two person gets to roll their dice, okay? It's that, um, it, let, let's say I, I am the game master, I'll be rolling the dice. And if I roll the dice, after I roll the dice, and if the, if it's, if the total score, is uh, five or more, then Alfred will have to pay Bertie X dollar. Okay, but if the total score is less than, is less than or equals to four, then Bertie will have to pay to Alfred X plus eight dollar. Okay. So X is between zero and eight, but inclusive of eight. Okay, both of them started with 100 bucks, huh? All right. 
So show that the expectation, now we're going to find the expectation of Alfred's cash. So for two dice. What's the total, what's the total score that we can get here? I mean, what a different score that we can get here. Minimally is two, right? Maximum is 12. Make sense? Because mm -hmm. two dice cannot be zero la, or it cannot be one. Because the lowest for both die is one and one. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, twelve. So expectation of Alfred's cash. Okay. So to find expectation of Alfred's cash, we have to define a random variable first. So what is the random variable here? Hello, anybody? Yeah, what? Yeah. What are you listening? Huh? <laughs> I was coughing down the thing. What? Oh. Well, what did you ask? I'm asking. So, what? 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 What should we do next? We are, we are supposed to define we are supposed to define a random variable for Alfred for Alfred's cash. So how are we going to do about go about doing? Because we, are, we need to find expectation, right? As you can see here, because our objective now is to find expectation of Alfred's cash. So to find expectation of El, expectation of Alfred's cash. Let X be the amount of money he has to pay. So we have to find so maybe x will have to be equals to Alfred's cash. Right? Like how much he needs to pay or mm, in this case because you see expectation of Alfred's cash means what? Like how much he has left. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Correct. That should be the translation, right? It's not how much he has to pay. It's about the expectation of he, Alfred's remaining cash. If you want to put it uh, to be more specific, it's to find Alfred's remaining cash. Okay. So, to, so if, since because of this, we got to this. We understood what is the random variable that we want to find. Okay. So from here, we have to go and find out um, the distribution for Alfred's uh, remaining cash. So X can be all the way from 1 to 8, right? Yeah. So X can be from 1 to 8, but uh, oh my god, let's draw this. I mean, I, I'm, I'm also, this is my first time seeing this, I, I'm also processing. Uh, I think this has to be a very huge table. So if X is Alfred's remaining cash, Actually, right, Alfred's 
remaining cash should be equals to original cash plus profits. And the profits, so we should fi be finding the expectation of the profits. So this table, so X should be, X should be equals to the profits instead of Alfred's remaining cash. So we have to redefine what is X. So now X is equals to amount of profits gain by Alfred. Because profits can be negative profit, right? Negative profit means loss. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Wait, there isn't there two parts of this because he has to pay or it's either he pay or he get or... Yeah, correct. It's either he like pay can we or just he get. Can, then can we just let X be around the amount of money that he has to pay? Then let Y be the amount of money the other guy has to pay. And then, so his remaining cash is the original plus the amount he pay plus the amount of money he get from the other guy. Usually, it should be in one table on its own. It has to be in one table on its own. So it's since like one for him and then one for the other guy. Um, cannot. We cannot do that. Mm. Because um, in this probability distribution, remember the summation of every single value must equate to one. So they must all be in one system. And now we have already identified that X is the amount of profit gained by Alfred. So Alfred either gain X dot is either Alfred pays X dollar or he gain X plus eight dollar. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe I don't use X because uh, there's a conflict of interest because over here they they have X also. No use, use A. Yeah. Wow, exactly what I was thinking. Okay. So we hundred percent we know that this has to be a. Then this is probability of a equals to a. So over here, there are only two sums of money that he can get. It's either he pays x dollar means the profit is minus x, or he gets x plus eight. What's the probability of him losing X dollar? Okay, the probability of him losing X dollar is if the total score is five or more. So at the top, huh? how many numbers are there? Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's what? Oh, can we call it like that? Oh, damn, we cannot call it like that. Is it, can we call it as 8 over... Do it times. One dial is times. This is where, right, you draw your, you draw this table. The X1, X2 thing. Yeah. This is when you draw this table. Why is this so called? Why is this so called? Yeah, it's very tedious. It's very, very tedious. Crazy. It's very tedious. But it's okay. We will not be defeated. So how you label the dice? D1, D2? 
One, two, three, four, five, or oh. one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, can, you can label it as D1, D2, doesn't matter. But basically, the whole point was to have this thing. Because we want to know what's the probability of getting each number. Oh. So yeah, very tedious. I know. I imagine this thing comes out in A levels. That's so it. the number inside is the total score. Um not really. What we want here, this is one, two. The number inside is a probability. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I thought the number inside like Oh yeah, yeah, closer. actually it should be. Yeah, correct, correct. So this will be two. This will be uh wow, we need to write out everything. This is uh three, four, five, six, seven. Well actually I shouldn't do that. I should write in another color. Maybe pink. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so right now we want to find uh how much will it uh what's the probability of of Alfred losing minus x dollar, which is from five or more, right? So we need to count how many numbers are there five or more because each box here, each box, each box over here. Okay, every single box here is a probability of 1 over 36. Agree? Mm -hmm. Every box here is a probability of 1 over 36. So now we need to count how many boxes are 5 and above. So over here we have 6 times 6 box. Uh, okay, so 6 times 6 box. Uh, we, we, actually, we can see that there are more boxes. There are more boxes where um, of five or more. So my, my answer will just count the boxes that are four or less. Which is this. So in total, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six. We only got six. Okay, so it's six over 36. Which is one over six. So there's a one over six chance that he will lose. Uh. So the probability of him winning is quite high, which is 5 over 6. Okay, so from here, we want to find the expectation of the amount of profit gained by Alfred. So the expectation of the amount of profit gained by Alfred will be expectation of A will be the summation of A times the probability of A equals to A and it will be minus x times 6 plus x plus 8. Sorry, sorry. Minus x times 1 over 6. Oh God. You got to be very patient here. I know this is very tedious. So over here we get minus 1 over 6x plus 5 over 6x plus 40 over 6 which is equivalent to 2 over 3 because it's 4 over 6x so it's 2 over 3x plus 40 over 6 which is divided by 2 is 20 over 3 okay so this is that this is the expected amount of profit gained by Alfred but this is when we come back to this statement over here. 
Alfred's remaining cash is equal to original cash plus profit, which also means that. Let me erase this. This whole thing is three marks. Oh my oh god, it's so not worth it. Yep, I understand. <laughs> so during an exam, you have to really take note of the time. Like I said, uh, you will say that it's not worth doing it. Okay, fine. Don't do this question during an exam. Because it's all about selecting the questions, right? In a buffet, mm. you don't eat everything. But the whole point is to eat your worth. Is to eat to your feel. Mm. Eat to your satisfaction, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. same, same thing as, as, as an examination. You're not supposed to eat everything. I mean, what are you trying to achieve when you when, when you are trying to when you get the full marks? You still get an A. They, they will not like give you an A, then at the top they give you a small star. No. There's 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 nothing like that. So mm -hmm. but right but right now I I can understand that this is this really worth three marks or not? Of course it's not like it's not worth it. Like suddenly they it's teach out the eight marks, okay. Yeah, exactly. I know, I know. There's really no other way, yeah. No other way, no other way, really. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like in a buffet, they suddenly dish out the premium salmon, then suddenly you see a freaking long queue, then they tell you that, oh, this buffet is only one hour long. Will you want to queue for the salmon? Then I'm like, okay, maybe I pass. I will just have the sub grade salmon and enjoy more other stuff. Right, it's the same concept here. There's no other way. Uh. Um, but actually, it, it, it's not really, uh, it won't really take up like, because, because it's three marks, we should only be taking 4.5 minutes. Yeah, but the understanding of this question already took way more than that. So for me, in the first three, in the first three, uh, in the first three, three, uh, three minutes or four minutes, right, I will have passed this question. Already. I'll be like, okay, I will come back later. Because maybe at the for, maybe for the last question, then I come back to this. It's minus two over. Eh, is it minus two over three? No. Because the answer is negative. Eh. Oh, you found it already? Yeah? No, I'm just calculating. Okay, because we haven't finished calculating yet. Over here, okay. So we have to look at this thing. Alfred's remaining cash and. Original cash plus profits. I see it's just a hundred plus that plus this, right? The two over three. Yes. But then the answer is one over three, then there's a negative two X. So the expectation of Alfred's remaining cash is equal to expectation of original cash plus profits. Which is equals to expectation of original cash plus expectation of profits. Expectation of 100 plus expectation of Isn't it just 2 over 3? Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So it's 100 minus plus, sorry. Yeah, I got it wrong. Bertie pays pays for X plus eight dollars to Alfred, so it should be an addition one, correct? Uh? that's the profit. Hundred plus two over three. Oh, hey, sorry, sorry. I got it. I got it the other way wrong. I got it. Yeah. The my probability is wrong. Yeah. Cause minus x means five or more. I cause just now I went to count. I went to count the. I went to count because I was saying that it's easier to count. Uh, what is. Uh, lesser, right? Over here, you got mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six. Then, by right, we should be using 36 minus 6 for this probability here. My bad, my bad. So, here should be 5 over 6 instead. And here should be 1 over 6. 
So here should be 5 over 6. Here should be 1 over 6. So in total, here should be minus 2 over 3. So 100 minus 2 over 3x plus 20. So we should get minus 2 over 3 plus uh, minus 2 over 3x plus 120. Will we get answer? What is 100 plus 20 over 3? 320 over 3. Three hundred and twenty over three. You take out one over three, you get minus two x plus three two zero. Did we make a mistake somewhere? Is it? Oh! I know why. The calculus mistake is here. Because I changed the values, I should have redone this part. Is it 4? But I also do that, but I can't get that. Okay. So it's minus x times 5 over 6 plus x plus 8 times 1 over 6, which is equal to minus 5 over 6x plus x over 6 plus 8 over 4 is uh, 4 over 3. Yeah. So from here, it will be 100 minus, sorry, plus 2 over 3x, because this is equal to minus 2 over 3x plus 4 over 3. So minus 2 over 3x plus 4 over 3, which is equal to minus 2 over 3x, 100 plus 4 divided by 3 is 3, 0, 4 over 3, which is equal to 1 over 3 times minus 2x plus 3, 0, 4. And there we go, we got it. There are 3 marks. Yes, it's 3 <laughs> marks. But we understood the concept eventually. I think it was the understanding that that took away a lot of time. And also the drawing, lah, because I mean, I'm doing on Zoom. Lah. So, I'm going to draw stuff like that, very much fun. Okay, but at least we understood this. Okay, next. Find the expectation of Alfred's cash after six games. So what what do you think is the is the answer after six games? Mm 
The expectation of Alfred's cash after six games. So we have to use, we cannot use this thing times six, of course. Right? If you use this thing times six, you'll be ridiculous, really. Doesn't make What's sense. Six? It's not this thing is the remaining cash. Right? This is his total sum of money. What what is the take what is the changing variable? What is the floating variable, right? It's the profits here. So you should mm -hmm. use the expectation of the profits to times time six. six. Yes. Then you add to uh -huh. yes. Then you add to the hundred. You cannot use this times six. Because initially, my initial thought was also, hey, maybe I times six. Huh? Yeah, I get it with you. Then something that hope that helped me back was two marks. It cannot be, it cannot be. Uh, one statement, two marks cannot be. Uh, these A levels people are sadistic. Uh, they, it's not possible that they give us like give the marks like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just look at the first part, man. <laughs> so you see, uh, there will be there will be some questions that are really uh what like uh oh my god i'm sorry they are this kind of liability kind of question in every a levels paper right there will be one or two questions that are like that okay something that will drag you down something that will want to take your marks away take your time away and this is one of the kind of question you you, you really have to identify that oh you know you you, you don't want to step into this you don't want to step into this this shit here mm. Yeah, that's why I always tell you all to not do via the, uh, the you, you shouldn't be doing questions starting from number 1 to number 12. No, you should never ever do that. Because you never know, maybe the first question, it will be the question that messes you up. That's why you have to identify, okay, this topic, I know this topic is, I'm very comfortable in it. Yeah. Okay, okay so part 1 and part 2, we resolved it really. Okay, basically just need to multiply this thing here by 6. Okay. Yeah. So thanks. Uh, find the value of x for the game to be fair. So uh, in this case, what does it mean to be fair? Uh, for it to be fair, it means that The expectation of Alfred's winnings, which is over here, okay, must be equal to the expectation of Bertie's winnings. Okay. So we already know expectation of Alfred winnings. So expectation of Bertie's winnings would have to be the other way around, right? So this will be small b, probability of big B equals to small b. And basically Alfred wins, she loses. And if Alfred loses, she wins. So for in, in, in the standpoint of Bertie, um, it will be minus 8 plus x plus 8 and x. So probability of Bertie losing is still 1 over 6. Mm -hmm. Right, probability of uh, Alfred uh, of Bertie winning is 5 over 6. So, from here, you should be able to find the answer. Okay, so expectation of Bertie will be of Bertie winning will be this times this plus add together. Then you equate to uh, expectation of Alfred's uh, profits. From there, you solve for x. Okay. No, you can say again. Can. Say carefully, yeah. Uh. Mm. Again. I said it.
Okay, okay, I say again, I say again. You're not funny, man. My friends always say that one. Damn. I thought it was really? very well. I thought it was it's like very well played because I'm like quite serious for all. Never mind. <laughs> like, anyone want anyone want us to help you buy food? Say now. Then people are like now. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. <laughs> okay. So let's cut. okay, so you guys understand you ladies know why how I device this table, right? Because it's the other way around. For Bertie to lose, so when Bertie pays, you see Bertie pays X plus eight dollars means Bertie is going to incur a loss, so it's minus X plus eight. Okay, so it should be the same as this over here. See, the probability of Bertie losing X plus eight is the same as is the same as uh, Alfred winning X plus eight, which is equals to one over six. Correct. Okay. You don't need the game to be fair for that to happen, right? Oh no, no we don't talk about fair first. We talk about fair later. Now we are, we just want to understand what's the probability distribution of Bertie first because the, the question tells us that for it to be fair, expectation of Alfred must be equal to expectation of Bertie. So but mm -hmm. the thing is I already got I already got this check. Now I don't have this. I need but expect I need the probability distribution of Bertie's winnings to get her uh, her expectation. Right? So we don't care about fair first. We just want to find the probability distribution. Okay, so the next is the next part is so for Bertie to win X dollar, it should be the same probability as Alfred losing X dollar, which is five over six. Okay. Huh? Don't, don't understand. Again. Can. No problem. No problem. No problem. I can do this all day. <laughs> you know who said that? No. Captain America. Oh. Oh, you're, you're never watch Marvel, huh? No. Okay, never mind. Oh, Jimmy, you understand what I'm saying, huh? Yeah. Okay. Wait, so negative. Like, so oh, Jimmy, negative. explain. Huh? See, this is equal to no. this. Yes, you're right. You're right. It's just that, why is there a negative sign here? Because now this is from Bertie's perspective. Hmm. It's the same thing. Vinay, you're right. It's just that now it's from Bertie's perspective. That's why it must be minus. Because if Alfred plus means Bertie minus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, if if Bertie plus, Bertie plus X means Alfred minus X. But the probability should still remain the same. Can you see? Yeah, then. Yeah lah. So from here, we already got Bertie's, uh, we got the probability distribution for Bertie's winnings. Okay. Then the next step is to, we want the game to be fair. We want to find the value of X for the game to be fair. So for the game to be fair, so from here, we will have to use Expectation of Bertie to be equal to expectation of Alfred. Do you agree about? Yeah. So far clear, don't need to go again, huh? No. I mean, I can do this again, man. No problem. Then? <laughs> Actually, I cannot really. <laughs> I've been very, very patient with this question. I you want to punch through my computer screen. For <laughs> 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 the game, to be fair, seriously, man. So just 5 over 6 x minus 1 over 6 x of 8 equals to the... So it's 5 over 6 x plus... 1 over 6 times minus x plus, oh my god, oh my god, times so x. So that equals to the other one? Ah? Yeah, correct. Ah. Equals to, okay. yeah, the other way around. Ah. Then, then you can equate x. Ah. Then solve for x after that. Okay. Just like that. Need, need to go again? No. No problem. Okay. So for part 4, very simple. 
They already give you x equals 3 already. They want to find the variance. Can find. Yeah. Can right. Remember, uh, they asked for variance for Alfred's cash, uh, not Alfred's winnings or profits. Uh. So it's this thing. Do you understand? So it's variance of 100. So it's variance of 100 minus a. the profits. Sorry, plus the profits. Plus A? Plus, um, yes, plus A. You're right. So what is variance of 100? Jamie? Zero. What? Uh, Don't fall asleep, eh? I'm not. What's variance of 100? Five, four. Oh my god. Three, two, one. Game two. over. Continue. It's zero. <laughs> Correct. You should say five, four, three, two, one, zero. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It was right. <laughs> After that, you need to find the variance of A, okay? Can? So how to find variance of A from the, over here, in and out, right? Mm -hmm. So it's in and out. Expectation of A square minus expectation of A square. Okay? Okay, done, done, done. Yes, done. Let's move on to binomial. <laughs> okay, we take five first. Let's take five, okay? <sighs> take five, I'll see you all back in five. Thanks for your patience. Mm. Yep. Thank you so much. Have a, have, have a short rest. Meanwhile, I'm going to be the DJ. Play some songs. You should listen to this song that... Um, uh, Rene introduced me. Mm -hmm. He's, hold on. Uh.
Small talk, no conversation That look makes me impatient I can't tell what you're thinking Please tell me what you're thinking Last night we were more than fine Just tell me if you changed your mind If you changed your mind Cause I'm all, I'm all in I'm calling, no answer Would you text me when you feel like When it feels right to you But I'm all, I'm all in I'm falling faster But if you're looking at me with the heart of doubt Don't kiss me right now Don't tell me that you need me Don't show up at my house All caught up in your feelings Don't run me round and round Don't fill me up just to let me down Just to let me down, down, down don't mess with my head Don't tell me you're falling with your feet Still on the ledge I'm all out of breath Baby, don't run me round and round Don't kiss me, no, don't kiss me right there oh. On your lips, just leave it If you don't mean it uh, yeah. You know you got me in the palm of your hand But I love those hands Okay, back. Are you back? Mm. Yes, Madam Chum. Jimmy, you don't have any questions to ask me, like for your tutorials and all. Everything all good? Uh, right now, I'm doing Sigma notation. So far, so good. But I haven't studied it yet. Okay, got any questions? Please book consultation with me, uh, so I can do yes, with you. Uh... Back. Yo. Madam Chum. Uh. Can you send me the binomial tutorial? Okay, we'll so James, how was uh, home-based learning? Was it better than physical classroom? What? What do you say? How is home based learning for you? Later. Uh, you mean for school? Yeah, la. is it better for you or like yeah. you prefer going to school? Uh, it's better. Because you can sleep in? No, because <laughs> usually, like, like, if there's no school, then I end up sleeping very late. But then, because, like, patient forces me to wake up early and start studying, then once like, I start, then with momentum there. So continue for the rest of the day. Huh? But you, if you go to school, you also have to wake up earlier. Not the same. I think I know why really. I think you're the kind of person, right? You're the kind of person who needs to... Um, you don't like people to push you. You like the push from to come from within. Wait, isn't it everybody? Mm, not really. Some people just like to be poked. Mm. Yeah. Some people just like to like, you know, just, you know, some, like, you just need to keep nagging at them. Hey, Renee. Ah, uh, never I also can. Uh. The question is like, 
Okay. Okay, guys, back me. I just a one more. I just want to make sure our objectives are met. I'll, I went through two questions on DRV. I'm gonna go through now two more questions on binomial. Okay. Huh? But we end in like. Oh, we started end. late. All oh, right. How late? It's like late. twenty minutes late. Eh. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's why I was like. We started at 20 minutes late. You got no class after this, man. Who, me? Yeah. No choice, I need to do what I got to do. Alright. Then I got to snowball it. I need to be a responsible tutor. Mm. Okay, but, but I tell you, this is different. This is going to be fast, okay? Because it's binomial distribution. Binomial distribution is all calculator. Okay, so remember last week, to even do a binomial distribution, right, you need to first define the random variable, define the distribution, then define the problem, then there you go, you're done. Okay? But to, to define the distribution, you need to know two things. First thing is the number of trials. Secondly is the probability of? The probability of what? Success. Success. Who said that? Me. Yes, one point goes to you. Okay. You should, you should start to keep track of scores, man. No, it's okay. Oh my god, I just realized if I put the both surnames together, it sounds funny. Huh? What? Don't do this nonsense. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> you, know, you know how is this being read or not? Yeah, but what does it mean? Machiam. <laughs> Machiam means uh like. It means like. Okay. Can we move on? Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> one point. Ding. Okay. In a large population, 35% of the people has blood group A. So the probability of uh, being in blood group A is 0 0.35. Okay, we've got to break down the question. Okay. You know, I don't know what's a blood type. Fantastic. So. I also don't know where. Guys, y'all should know. Really. I'm scared of taking blood tests, so I don't. I just never had a chance to. Uh, you don't have to do that. It's like, I think it's in your health booklet. No, it's not. If not, it's on, on your IC. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, never mind. But you have to know. Okay. Let's carry on. Actually, I also don't know mine. <laughs> then you say so much. No, no, no. But, but the thing is, I know where to find my blood, my blood type. Because you know, like in NS, right? Everybody is given this dog tag, you know, like this thing that we wear around our neck. Oh. Yeah, and on that thing, right, uh, our blood group is there. Yeah. So, uh, you need to go find your dog tag first, ah? Uh, don't need lah, why? Doesn't matter is it, like, Isn't it called a lanyard, not a dog tag? No, it's a dog tag. It's not a lanyard. A lanyard so it's like is, a collar? Lanyard is like... <laughs> you know? So it's like a collar. Something like that. Oh, that's cute. No, that's not a top tag. A top tag looks something like that. <laughs> oh, I thought you drew a face. Huh? Yeah, it's like that. You have two of it. So right, what what this thing does is right. Why do you have to wear? Because during war, right. If you die, uh, then like let's oh, say, then they can identify you. Correct. Let's say the bomb explodes in your face or your face is gone, let's say. Like yeah. you know, like Yeah. Like your no your face is gone, like like there's no head. The head is like messed up. Yee, mm. don't draw that. Okay. <laughs> now it looks like a dog. So, oh my god, it looks like dude, it looks like a guy. So this is the face and that's his chef hat and that's his arms. Okay. Okay, sure. 
But anyway, so what happens is we have two of it. So during during war, right? Let's say if 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 I were to die, right? Uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and my troops walk past me, right? They were like, oh, okay, this guy died. So I need to report back. But I cannot bring his body back, right? It's them, it's a, it'll be a liability. So what I'll bring is, I will, I will just cut off and I'll just take this portion. I'll just bring it then back. Then they can go back and then like... Oh, so they can register. Like... They can register. They can help me to register that I'm dead. Huh? Then what's oh, the other one for? Sad, though. What? What's the the other, other one is to leave it there so that when people walk past, they'll know, okay, this person is dead. Lah. That's all. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, yeah, it's like sad. That, you can just go to www.ns.com.sg slash date to register. Oh my. Why? <laughs> okay. Can I carry on now? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it's true. Uh, except the last URL. Everything that I said just now is true, except the last URL. Yeah, I know. Okay. The sequence so of... Whatever, well, just ignore me, just continue. Yeah, the ns.sg slash dead. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> the sequence of blood from the first five people attending a clinic are to be tested. It can be assumed that these five people are random sample. Okay, so five people are going to attend to, to go to this clinic and to be tested. Okay, mm -hmm. the random variable X denotes the number of people in the sample who are found to be blood group A. Okay, this is um this is really additional help. We already know that because remember I told you that last week I mentioned the probability of success. has a huge correlation and is being determined and determines the definition of the random variable. Okay, so in this case, since we already know that the probability of success is 0 0.35, and what is this 0 0.35? It's the, number of, it's the number of people who will get blood group A. So obviously, the random variable X here must be the number of people who, who are in blood group A. Okay, so we have we are done breaking down the question. So now we are going to solve the question. So we want to find the probability of x lesser or equals to four. Okay, firstly we must we must state first. Uh, x is equals to number of people having who are having blood group. A. Okay, so step two. Step two is to state the distribution, right? So mm -hmm. X follows binomial distribution. How many people? Five, right? Total number of trials. What's the probability of success? 0 0.35. Okay, so we want probability of X to be less than four. Okay, can I straight away use binom? PDF. No. Why cannot use binom PDF? We'll do the thing. Why cannot use binom PDF? Because we have to use binom CDF. Because it's an inequality, it's not an equal sign. For equal sign, Yes, we use PDF. For less or equals, so Rene is right. We use CDF. Okay. So over here, we will have to change to less or equals to 3. Then from here on, use your GC. Very, very simple. Okay. So for part B. Three of such samples of five people are taken. Okay, look. They are changing the random variable here, okay? They are changing the random variable. So there are three of such samples of five people. So there are five people in sample A, five people sample B, five people sample C. Okay? Mm. 
So, okay, then after next is given that each of these three samples has more than three people with blood group A. Find the probability that exactly two sample has each of four people with blood group A. Wow. How? What, what is the setter's intention here? What is the setter? Huh? What's the setter's intention? They said given that. Whenever you see given that, right? Cool. Means that. What? What do you say? Whenever they say given that means what? Continue. No. Proof. It starts with C. Continue. No. Condition. Oh, the, the thing, the thing. The thing. Very good. Totally understand what you're talking about. That, that, it's that, called that, the thing. thing. Over the, the thing, no, no. Yes, correct. So it's conditional probability. What's the formula for conditional probability? Probability Forever. of A given B is equals to probability of A intersect B over probability of B. Have to memorize this. Okay, this like probability of, let's say, Jamie goes to med school. Given that in she interns at hospital. Okay, it will be equals to probability of go, go, going to med school intersect intern over probability of intern. Why? Why is it over probability of intern? Because probability of intern becomes the subset really. It's not over one, but right, it should be over one. Because it's everything. You see? Right over here. This is school, this is intern. Probability of her going to med school, it is probability of school and intern intersect probability of intern, which is here. Understand? Yes. Yeah. It's no longer over. It's no longer over the whole probability of of this um of, of, of this Venn diagram. No, it's no longer that because there's a condition. There's a condition attached to it already. Given that she interns at the hospital. Okay. So anyway, I I, I did sidetrack a bit to to uh help you guys to understand. Conditional prop. Meaning you understand? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So when they say given that means you, they want you to execute conditional prop. Okay. And they tell you that probability of three of these samples have more than three people. Each of these samples have more than three people with blood group A. Find the probability that exactly two of the samples has each four people with blood group A. Oh my god. Oh. <sighs> my brain is having some issues processing the statement. Given that each of these samples have more than each of these three samples have more than three people with Here. Exactly two of the samples has each four people with the English is so bad. Okay. Yeah, it's quite bad. Okay, so let me explain the second part here first. Huh? Here, 
find a probability that exactly two of the samples has each four people. Means, okay, what they are trying to say is, there are three samples, okay? I have, three samples of five people. They want to find the probability that two of them, okay, has four people with blood group A. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that's what they want to find. Okay. So how do we find that? Okay, we have to draw a, re why is this, why is this put in B part one? Okay. So we want to, basically what, what we want to try to find here, when we look at, we just look at one sample first. We want to find the probability of X to be equals to four, right? One PX has each four people. So we want to find probability of X equals to four. We can find that from here using this distribution here. Okay, PX equals to four. Can someone find it for me first using GC? Using, the, using these parameters? Is anybody helping me to find the answer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't tell me nobody is helping me at all. What's the answer? Hello? I don't have my GC with me. Then Jamie, do you have a GC? I don't know what to press. <laughs> I need you to press this thing. Go to the main calculator menu. Go yeah, the distribution, then where? Second VRS, you get the distribution. Uh huh. Then because this is PX equals to 4, uh, you go to binom, PDF, scroll down. Yeah, I'm there already. Okay, then keep, this is then you have your n right, n is five, your p is zero point three five, your x is four. Then paste the value and enter. Wait, it's again. Ah. <laughs> uh. You go to second, you go to distribution. Yeah, no, 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 lower, yeah, lower is what? <laughs> no, it's binom PDF, there's no lower, binom. 
Eh, why is it giving me CDF when I press PDF? Ah, CDF will not give you lower also. Huh? It's by norm, eh, not normal. Eh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Just wait. <laughs> Been waiting. Oh, okay, 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 I got it. Number I have Charles. been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I've been waiting. Okay, what's the answer? Come on. Number of Charles. What? Yeah, number of Charles is. What do you think? I've been explaining. Let me see, let me see. Five. Okay, five. P is 0.35. Uh, 0 0.04877 Yes, okay <laughs> Okay, I can do this, Kenny, you can do this, come on <laughs> Just a bit more, just a bit more Okay, so we know the probability of x equals 4 means for in a group of 5 uh, The probability of having 4 people to be in blood group A uh, is 0 0.04887 for 877. Okay, now we want two groups. We want two groups to have this. Okay, but the thing is, they say given that each of these three samples has more than three people. Okay, so this is a pro conditional prop question. Sadly, right, we need to do this. Okay, so probability that what he is trying to say is probability of finding two samples with four people in A given given what? Three samples more than There are three samples with more than three people in A. Okay, so if you still remember the formula that I wrote just now is probability of A given B is equals to probability of A intersect B over probability of B. Okay, so what I should be getting will be, if I were to manipulate this equation, it will be Probability of two samples with four people in A intersect. Three samples with more than three people in A. Over Probability of this, right? Probability of B, right? Which mm -hmm. is yeah. probability of three samples with more than three people in A. This is super tedious. Okay, so usually this is the trick when coming to solve when, when, when solving this kind of conditional prop question. Okay, the numerator is going to be very confusing, but you have to find the intersection. You have to find the intersection. Two samples with four people in A intersect three samples with more than three people in A. 
what's the intersection here? If you look at these two events, two samples with four people in A and three samples with more than three people in A, what would be the intersection? Four people. The four intersection will be uh, the intersection will be two two samples with four people with four people in A, right? Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to doing conditional prop question, you have to analyze. Well, then, it isn't that just copying? Copying what? Nothing. So far up to this point, you understand? Yeah. Okay. Uh. So, then what now? Okay, then what now? How do we find probability of the numerator? The two samples with four people in A. Just now we already found, right? I got, after a long wait, nobody had a GC. <laughs> then we finally found out that the probability of X equals to four, out of five people, four people in group A, that this is the probability, 0 0.04877. This is for... One, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, I'm just going to go through this one question only. I cannot move on to the another question already. <laughs> you can agree on that. Yeah. So I hope you all can give me your attention for this question. It's not it's not times two, right? Uh it's not. Relax. Is, not yet, is it times is, is it square? Okay, we are. Uh, so now we have to give another uh, we have to redefine it. We have to redefine it. So we have to let, let's say, B be equals to number of samples with four people in A. So B will follow, oh, I cannot use B. I have to use some other variable. Let's say I use uh, 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 K. X. K equals the number of samples with four people in blood group A. So K will follow by normal distribution. Total number of trials, how many groups are there? We have three groups. And the probability of success, what's the probability of success? Probability of success means to have four people in blood group A is 0 0.04877. It's a brand new distribution because of this over here. When I, when I saw this, I already knew that I have to reconstruct a new distribution. Everybody clear? Mm. Yes. Okay. Then from here, we have to find probability of K to be equals to... Equals to what? Two. Two, correct. Then you can use your GDC. You can use your GC. Okay. Jimmy, can you mm. calculate for me? Same thing with binom PDF uh, because of equal sign. Yes. Seven point one zero zero. Zero point what? Eh? What the heck? Yo, man. Okay, 0 0.99988. I'm oh, serious, huh? It's 0 0.9998. Yeah. That's, that's very high. That's like almost one right Okay, never mind. Okay, 0 0.9998. Okay, divide by what? 
what's the probability of three samples with more than three, pe three people in blood group A? So this means what? What's the, so for, for this will be probability for one sample, if you talk about one sample, uh, will be probability of X with more than three. Right? Wait, can you? Uh, what? 0 0.00678. Thank you. Seven, five. Thank you for the correction. Appreciate it, appreciate it, really. 0 0.00. Zero zero. Uh, six seven eight seven. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Point zero zero six seven eight seven. Okay. So for the denominator, we want three samples with more than three people in A. Okay, so firstly, we need to find the probability of one sample with more than three people in A first, which, which means we have to use our, use our original distribution that we found in part A. Okay, so from there, we will be using probability of x greater than three, which is equals to one minus probability of x less or equals to two. Agree? Mm -hmm. Rene, agree? Yeah. Probability of x greater than 3 is 1 minus probability of x less or equals to 2. Mm. <laughs> hey, don't, don't, don't moan here. No, <laughs> I'm not even... Hey, this is all recorded. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Is it correct or not? Wait, I need not? to draw the thing. I need to draw the thing. Yes, draw it, draw it. That's the reason why I asked so many times, huh? Yeah. Is it? Is it? If you look at the number line, one, two. Yes, we like more than two, so it's equal to three, right? So you want more than three. More than three no. means four onwards. Huh? No, that's not what I meant, sir. X greater than X. We want X greater than three, right? We want probability of X greater than three. Oh, we want that. Yeah, we want probably our x greater than 3. Okay. Yeah, since we want x to be greater than 3, means that we need to use 1 minus probability of x lesser or equals to 2. Is that correct? No. No, yes, you're right. That must be, yes, correct. Thank you. Okay, let me erase this whole nonsense. So probability of x greater than 3 will be equals to 1 minus probability of x less or equals to 3, which we have already found in part A, right over here. So it will be 1 minus whatever answer this is. Okay, then we will. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say the answer is, for instance, this answer is, uh, is D, okay? Whatever this is. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's say it's D. Mm -hmm. So be, we will put D here because we want three samples to be greater than three. So it will be D cube. Because D times D times D. We want all three samples to be there. Mm -hmm. Renee, okay? Jimmy, okay? 
Mm. No questions, ah. Uh. Are you okay, no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> I tell you what, I really have to, I have to go for my next lesson really. <laughs> so, okay. uh, I think we will just stop here first because, okay. I mean, no choice. These two questions are very um, intense. Uh. Mm. Uh, That's an understatement. Yeah, it is. It is. But I hope you, all, you guys understand the concept of uh, what I'm doing here. When I put down a question, you all know what, what I'm finding at every step, right? Mm. Because, because the only reason why it's so complicated is because they introduce conditional prop. Mm. Okay. So what now? Nothing else, ah. Uh. Y'all can chill with you. Have a great weekend. Take a bit more closure. Thanks. Bye. Okay, we have come to the end of our tutorial. See you again next week. Uh, same thing. Uh, if you have any questions, please book consult with me. I will get back to you on the earliest time. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye.